Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham, and he increased his people greatly, and made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal subtly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant, and Aaron whom he had chosen. They showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. Now that the Most High is pouring out his truth into the world, exposing what was done in darkness and bringing what was hidden into the light, we must revisit the curses that was placed on Ham's youngest son, Canaan. The Israelites and Mizraim's bloodline is the most coveted bloodlines in the world. If the people are not claiming to be an Israelite, they claim Ham's son's Mizraim legacy as their own. Egypt was the first great civilization in the world. Also, the Israelites spent a lot of time amongst Mizraim. The reason the Israelite bloodline is coveted, the Most High chose to show his sovereignty in this dark world through the Israelite nation. The Israelites spent a lot of time among the children of Ham. The scriptures even compare the appearance of the Israelites to the Hamites. When the Most High was creating the Israelite bloodline, they dwell in the land of Canaan. The Israelites didn't multiply into a great nation until they dwell in the land of Mizraim. Pharaoh and Joseph gave to the Israelites the best parts in the land of Mizraim, the city of Goshen, to dwell. And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee. The land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land make thy father and brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen let them dwell. And if thou knowest any men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. The Most High sent Jacob, the progenitor to the Israelite bloodline, to live in the land of Mizraim. From there, the Israelites multiply into a great nation. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen. And they had possessions therein, and grew and multiplied exceedingly. When Jacob and his children left the land of Canaan and came to the land of Mizraim and dwell in the city of Goshen, Jacob's family altogether was roughly 70 members. Jacob's sons took wives for themselves when they dwell in the land of Canaan. The Israelites did not become a great nation until they live in the land of Mizraim in the city of Goshen. It was from Goshen, the land of Ham, the Israelites multiply into a great nation. For a long time, many teachers in the false awakening made it seem as if Jacob's sons and their children were getting married to women from multiple nations to establish the Israelite bloodline. For a period of time, the false teachers created a doctrine that became a stumbling block to many. You are what your father is. This false doctrine gave the modern sons of Israel access to strange women that the Most High warned them against. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words, which forsaketh the guide of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. The Twelve Tribes series on this channel introduce you to the family lineage of Jacob's wives. All four of Jacob's wives were Hebrew women and related. Rachel and Leah are sisters. Their father is Laban, Rebekah's brother. Rebekah is Jacob's mother. Rebekah is related to Abraham. That is why Abraham sent his servant to find a wife for his son Isaac from his family. Zilpha and Bilhah are sisters. They are the maid servants to Leah and Rachel. Both Leah and Rachel gave their maid servant to Jacob as wives. Zilpha and Bilhah father is Rathias. Rathias is related to Abraham. Now my mother was Bilhah, daughter of Rathias, the brother of Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, who was born on one and the self same day with Rachel. And Rathias was of the family of Abraham, a Chaldean, God-fearing, freeborn, and noble. The Most High didn't use any strange women to start the Israelite bloodline. The Most High wanted to create a holy and righteous seed in the world. 
Majority of the nations alive at that time were idolaters. That is why the Most High called Abraham out from his native country to go to the land of Canaan. The Most High promised Abraham that he will make him a father to many nations. Despite Abraham having eight sons, the Most High selected Isaac to be the foundation to the Israelite bloodline. From Isaac's two sons, Esau and Jacob, the Most High selected Jacob to be the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. The holy seed the Most High created in this world, their purpose is to be a light to the other nations. Most people believe the Israelite bloodline is mixed with several nations because the Israelites live among the Canaanites and Mizraim. In addition, the Israelites went into exile on multiple occasions. It's well documented in the scriptures that Judah married a Canaanite woman. The Canaanites are a cursed people. Not only did the Most High curse them and Noah cursed them, Jacob, the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline, cursed them as well and said no Canaanite woman should mingle with his own seed. That is one of the reasons Judah's sons by the Canaanite woman were killed. Yet some days after this, Suah bare three sons unto Judah, whose names were Ur, Onan, and Salah. And when Ur was growing up, Judah married him, his firstborn son, unto a woman named Tamar, daughter of Kadesh Levi. And Ur continued with her a long time, and yet behaved after the manner of the men of Sodom and Gomorrah. And God looked down upon his evil deeds and killed him. Then Judah married his son Onan to Tamar, saying, He shall raise seed unto his brother. Yet him also did God kill because of his evil deeds, on account of Jacob's curse, that no Canaanitish seed should mingle with his own. So God would not let any of it mingle with that of Jacob the righteous. As you heard for yourself in the scriptures, Jacob didn't want the Canaanite bloodline to mingle with his own seed. The Most High wanted to create a righteous seed on the earth. A cursed people cannot be the foundation to a holy righteous people. The Canaanites were pagans and idolaters. That is one of the reasons Isaac said to both of his sons not to marry the Canaanite women. Also, Jacob understood that the Most High wouldn't be pleased by his sons' actions if they chose a Canaanite woman for wives. The Most High preserved the Israelite bloodline despite the workers of iniquity falsifying history and misinterpreting the scriptures. Today, in the false awakening, we have Israelites proclaiming that they can marry whomever they want and the child born to them by the strange women and men will be Israelite and accepted by the Most High as righteous. The Most High killed Judah's sons from the Canaanite woman. Yet we have Israelites believing the Most High made an exception for them. Despite the Most High forbidding the sons of Israel not to mingle their seed with the strange women, also not to give their daughters to the other nation's sons, they created a false doctrine to please the lust of the flesh. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them, thy daughter. Thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. And do thou, Moses, command the children of Israel and exhort them not to give their daughters to the Gentiles and not to take for their sons any of the daughters of the Gentiles. For this is abominable before the Lord. For this reason I have written for thee in the words of the law all the deeds of the Shechemites, which they wrought against Dina, and how the sons of Jacob spake, saying, we shall not give our daughters to a man who is uncircumcised, for that were a reproach unto us. And it is a reproach to Israel, to those who give and to those who take the daughters of the Gentiles, for this is unclean and abominable to Israel. The Most High prevented the seed of Canaan from intermingling with the Israelite bloodline. The Israelites' bloodline started from the seed of Abraham. The Most High also gave to Lot a portion of the kingdom through Judah. Before we dive deep into the foundation of the Israelite bloodline, let us find out why Canaan was cursed multiple times. Canaan is the youngest son of Ham. Ham is the second son of Noah. The Most High used Noah's family to repopulate the earth after the flood. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. 
The sons of Ham are Cush, Mizraim, Foot, and Canaan. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Foot, and Canaan. The first time Canaan was cursed was due to the actions of his father Ham. The scriptures in the Bible said that Noah became drunk with wine and passed out naked. The scriptures made it appear as if Noah was a drunkard. Ham, when he saw his father, he didn't have any pity on him but mocked him. The little information given to us in the scriptures about this incident caused many people to allow their imaginations to run wild and create many doctrines concerning him uncovering his father. Israelites, this is why it's important for you to let the Holy Spirit guide you into all truth. That way the truth shall set the record straight. If you let the Holy Spirit guide you, the spirit of truth will lead you to where you can find the hidden truth. In the book of Adam and Eve, Noah and his sons live on the holy mountain for a hundred years and begin to multiply. Noah found a vine and he planted the vine. Noah had no knowledge about this vine. He took care of this vine until it bare fruits. When Noah tasted the fruit and saw that it was sweet, he pressed the fruit and drank the juice. Out of ignorance, Noah became drunk and passed out. And Noah and his sons dwell on that mountain about a hundred years until he had children and children's children. And Noah took a root of vine and planted it and dressed it until it yielded fruit. It was sweet and Noah took some of it and pressed wine out of it and took it one night and drank of it and was drunk. And he went to sleep next to his wife unawares. To the people who thought Noah was a drunkard, he wasn't. Noah was a righteous man that served the Most High. That is why the Most High used his seed to repopulate this earth after the flood. The scriptures in the Bible made it appear as if Noah was this irresponsible man that couldn't hold his alcohol. I have heard numerous doctrines about Ham sleeping with his mother, which is why Noah cursed him. The truth is, Ham saw his father drunk, uncovered, and unable to do a thing. Instead of helping his father, Ham laughed at his father and called him an old man. Some people know what it feels like to have a hangover. When Ham said to his father in laughter, what have you done? His mother heard it. After Noah recovered from his drunken state, his wife told him what Ham had done and Noah became angry and cursed Ham and made him a servant to his brothers. Then Ham, his son, came into the house in the morning and saw his father uncovered and drunk with wine and without sense to know anything. Then Ham, his son, kept on laughing at him and said, What is this thou hast done, O thou old man? Yet the old man understood not what he said. Only Noah's wife understood it well. Then Ham went out laughing at his father and told his brothers Shem and Japheth what his father had done and laughed at his parents. Yet his brothers were angry with him and rebuked him well for so doing because they were afraid of him as regards the old man. For Ham was rough and hard in his talk. Then Shem and Japheth rose quickly and took with them a coverlet and put behind their backs that coverlet that reached unto their feet. And they walked backwards and turned their face towards the way they had gone until they came to their parents. Then they threw the coverlet over them and went from them in haste so as not to see them. Yet on the morrow after this, Noah's wife told him what Ham had said and what he had done. Then was Noah very angry with his son Ham for what he had done. And he cursed him and made him servant of his brothers. The book of Adam and Eve said that Noah cursed Ham. The scriptures in the Bible said Noah cursed Canaan. I'm not sure why would Noah curse Canaan if Ham was the one who laughed at him and not help him when he passed out drunk. The book of Adam and Eve said that Noah and his family lived on the mountain for a hundred years until he had children and his sons had children. Canaan was the youngest son born to Ham. A question to ask yourself, was Canaan born when all of this took place? According to the scriptures in the Bible, Shem was a hundred years old when his son Arphaxad was born. The scriptures went on to say that Arphaxad was born two years after the flood. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was an hundred years old and begat Arphaxad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad five hundred years and begat sons and daughters. 
because the scriptures are focused on the coming of the Messiah that will redeem Adam and the righteous, little information is said about the other people that had a role to play in the journey to our redemption. Since the scriptures are focused on the chosen people, the Most High used to show himself strong through, the scriptures didn't disclose information about Canaan's birth. The Israelites spent a great amount of time among the Canaanites. Canaan's birth should have been included in the scriptures. I believe the sons of Noah began to multiply on the earth two years after the flood. With the secrets manifesting and the Holy Spirit revealing truth, I believe the Most High cursed Ham for his transgressions against his father Noah. Noah made him a servant to his brothers Shem and Japheth. In the scriptures in the Bible, Noah said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servant will he be to his brothers. Noah went on to bless Shem and Japheth. And Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Canaan was the grandson of Noah and the youngest son to Ham. Both in the book of Adam and Eve and in the scriptures in the Bible did not disclose Canaan's whereabouts when Noah became drunk and Ham mocked him. Ham talked bad about his father to his brothers. Why would Noah curse Canaan who was not a part of the situation? unless Canaan was present or Ham's original name was Canaan. I also believe the workers of iniquity used the situation between Ham and his father Noah as the reason to why Canaan was cursed since the scriptures in the Bible didn't disclose Canaan's other transgressions that brought forth curses in his life. The story of how Canaan occupied the land of Canaan was removed from the scriptures in the Bible. If you don't know by now, the scriptures in the Bible are very altered. The scriptures are not in chronological order. The scriptures are manipulated to falsify history as well as to give the serpent seed an identity and inheritance on this earth. Israelites, that is why it's important for the Holy Spirit to open the scriptures to give you understanding. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. According to the scriptures in the Bible, Noah cursed Canaan and made him a servant to his brothers. Canaan's brothers were Cush, Mizraim, and Foot. When Noah blessed Japheth and Shem, Noah said that Canaan would be their servant. The curse of Noah on Canaan was the first curse put on Canaan. It was through this curse the workers of iniquity used to justify their injustice against the Israelites they mistreated during and after the transatlantic slave trade. Israelites, know that there's a difference between a servant and a slave. A slave is a person who was purchased and their rights are taken away and they are treated like property instead of a human being. A servant is a person that is paid for their services. A servant is not bound and they have rights. The workers of iniquity who ruled over us in the land of our captivity made us their slaves, not servants. Abraham had multiple servants and the head servant was over all that he had. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. There is not a scripture in the Bible or in the Apocrypha that would justify what the oppressors have done to the Israelites they mistreated. That is why they will go into captivity when the Most High judged them. When the Most High divided the earth among the sons of Noah, as you heard, Noah cursed Canaan, according to the scriptures in the Bible. The curse placed on Canaan by Noah for the iniquity of Ham is the reason given to us for the Canaanite curse. The book of Jubilees revealed the truth behind the Canaanite curse. Ham's children inherited the southern region of this earth. Japheth's children inherited the northern region of this world. Shem inherited the middle of the earth. From the unmasking of Melchizedek, you should know why Shem's inheritance was the middle of the earth. Majority of the prophecy the Most High fulfilled on this earth took place in the middle of the earth. It was prophesied long before the earth was divided among the children of Noah that Shem would inherit the middle of the earth. Everything written must be fulfilled. 
Ham's children inherited the southern region of this world. Ham's land inheritance was described to be hot. After they have divided the earth, Noah bound his sons by an oath. The oath consists of a curse on anyone who occupy land that don't belong to them. And thus the sons of Noah divided unto their sons in the presence of Noah their father, and he bound them all by an oath, imprecating a curse on everyone that sought to seize the portion which had not fallen to him by his lot. We know that the Most High divided all the land on this earth to Noah's sons. It is well documented in the scriptures in the Bible of the land inheritance given to the sons of Noah. Noah bound his sons to an oath that would become a curse on whomever that took land that don't belong to them. When the children of Shem, Ham, and Japheth began to multiply on the earth, they began to build great cities in the land that they inherited. According to the books of Jubilees, Ham and his sons went to the land they inherited. Canaan saw how good the land of Lebanon was, he coveted that piece of land. After Canaan saw how great the land of Lebanon was, he did not go into the land he inherited. Canaan decided to dwell in the land of Lebanon and occupied it. And Ham and his sons went into the land which he was to occupy, which he inquired as his portion in the land of the south. And Canaan saw the land of Lebanon to the river of Egypt, that it was very good. And he went not into the land of his inheritance, to the west that is to the sea, and he dwelt in the land of Lebanon, eastward and westward from the border of Jordan and from the border of the sea. When Ham and Canaan's brothers, Cush, Mizraim, and Phut saw that Canaan decided to live in a land that don't belong to him, his father and his brothers warned him not to dwell in the land. His brothers also reminded Canaan of the oath Noah bound them to. Canaan's brothers warned him that his children would fall in the land and they would become a curse. Canaan did not listen to his father and brothers and dwell in the land of Lebanon that belonged to Shem. The sons of Noah had a habit of naming cities and territories after their name. After Canaan occupied the land of Lebanon, he called the land after his name. That is how the promised land became the land of Canaan. And Canaan saw the land of Lebanon to the river of Egypt that it was very good. And he went not into the land of his inheritance to the west that is to the sea. And he dwelt in the land of Lebanon eastward and westward from the border of Jordan and from the border of the sea. And Ham, his father, and Cush, and Mizraim, his brothers, said unto him, Thou hast settled in a land which is not thine, and which did not fall to us by lot. Do not do so, for if thou do so, thou and thou sons will fall in the land and be accursed through sedition. For by sedition ye have settled, and by sedition will thy children fall, and thou shalt be rooted out forever." Dwell not in the dwelling of Shem, for to Shem and to his sons did it come by their lot. Cursed are thou, and cursed shall thou be beyond all the sons of Noah, by the curse by which we bound ourselves by an oath in the presence of the holy judge, and in the presence of Noah our father. But he did not hearken unto them, and dwell in the land of Lebanon, from Hamath to the entering of Egypt, he and his sons until this day. And for this reason, that land is named Canaan. As you can see, Israelites, the curse that was placed on Canaan came from stealing land that did not belong to him. The Canaanites curse had nothing to do with the situation that happened between him and his father. If you look at the Hamites today, majority of them have the same fate with the Israelites who were scattered all over the world, serving a sentence for forsaking the Most High. The Hamites are not doing any better than the Israelites. Their land is controlled and occupied by the workers of iniquity that colonize their land. The Hamites are indeed cursed for their father's Ham's transgressions. For the people who are not aware of Ham's sins, shortly after the ark rested on Mount Ararat and Noah and his family came out of the ark, Ham stole the garments that belonged to Adam and gave it to his son Cush. For after the death of Adam and his wife, the garments were given to Enoch, the son of Jared. And when Enoch was taken up to God, he gave them to Methuselah, his son. And at the death of Methuselah, Noah took them and brought them to the ark, and they were with him until he went out of the ark. 
and in their going out, Ham stole those garments from Noah, his father, and he took them and hid them from his brothers. And when Ham beget his firstborn, Cush, he gave him the garments in secret, and they were with Cush many days. And Cush also concealed them from his sons and brothers. And when Cush had begotten Nimrod, he gave him those garments through his love for him. And Nimrod grew up, and when he was twenty years old, he put on those garments. The scriptures in the Bible called Nimrod the first mighty man on the earth. It was Nimrod, the son of Cush, that was the leader over the people when they decided to build the Tower of Babel to fight against the Most High in the heavens. Ham and his seed are not innocent from iniquities. That is the reason I believe Noah cursed Ham, not Canaan, and made him a servant to his brothers. The synagogue of Satan capitalized on the curse placed on Ham to enslave the Israelites as well as to conceal who they are. The numerous doctrines, the workers of iniquity taught from their demonic pulpits in the pagan church of black people being cursed with black skin, and the many outrageous doctrines they came up with to demean the indigenous black people to justify their wicked ways is not the result of the curse that is on Ham to become a servant to his brothers. Remember, Ham's brothers are Japhath and Shem. Both Shem and Japhath are indigenous black men. The people who enslaved the Israelites and colonized the land of Ham and every land in this world are not indigenous black people. They come from the other species of mankind. They had no rights to enslave anyone. The oath that bound the sons of Noah to a curse against anyone who occupied land that don't belong to them started to fall upon the Canaanites. Cush, Mizraim, Foot, and Ham said that the Canaanites would die on the land. When the Most High called Abraham and told him to go to the land that he would show him, the land the Most High sent Abraham to was the land of Canaan. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. The Most High promised Abraham by covenant that he would give him the land that he became a stranger on. The promised land the Most High gave to Abraham and later to the Israelites was the land of Canaan that belonged to Shem from the very beginning. The Canaanites wrongfully occupied the land. That is why when Joshua, the son of Nun, led the Israelites to inherit the land that was given to them as an inheritance, the Most High commanded the Israelites to destroy the Canaanites that dwell on the land. The Most High said to the Israelites to destroy their high places and every abomination the Canaanites practice on the land. These are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land, which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it, all the days that ye live upon the earth. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess served their gods, upon the high mountains and upon the hills, and under every green tree, and ye shall overthrow their altars, and break their pillars, and burn their groves with fire, and ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods, and destroy the names of them out of that place. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid because of them, for tomorrow about this time I will deliver them up all slain before Israel. Thou shalt hock their horses, and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua came and all the people of war with him against them by the waters of Merom suddenly, and they fell upon them. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, who smote them and chased them unto great Zidon and unto Mizraphath Maim and unto the valley of Mizpeh eastward. And they smote them until they left them none remaining. And Joshua did unto them as the Lord bade him. 
be hocked to their horses and burn their chariots with fire. Another reason the Most High poured out the curses on the Canaanites, they polluted his land with their abominations. The Canaanites were idolaters and they did a lot of abominable things. The Most High wanted the Israelites to destroy them and all of their idol gods from the promised land. The city Jerusalem, the Most High made a holy place, was in the land of Canaan. The Most High wasn't going to allow the Canaanites to practice their abominations in his holy city. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob lived in the land of Canaan among the Canaanites who persecute them. The Israelites was not a great nation when they lived in the land of Canaan. The birth of the Israelite nation was at the beginning stages when they dwell in the land of Canaan. The Most High didn't want the righteous seed to mingle with the Canaanites. That is why Isaac forbid his sons from marrying a Canaanite woman. The Most High was harsh on Judah when he married a Canaanite woman. The Most High did not allow the seed of the Canaanites to mingle with the Israelites. The Israelite nation was from within the Hebrew bloodline. She was of a Canaanite family. And Jacob's heart suffered much on that account. And he said to Judah, his son, who had married that wife, the God of Abraham and of Isaac would not allow the seed of this Canaanitish woman to mingle with my seed. To the Israelites who believe they can marry whomever they want and the Most High will be pleased, you truly don't know the Most High, nor do you serve him. Any Israelite who pushed the doctrine of marrying strange women to create Israelite children don't fear the Most High. The Most High went to great lengths to make sure the Israelite bloodline was not polluted with any other abominable seed. There are many Israelites who use King Solomon as an example to justify taking strange women. Many of them failed to see that Solomon was destroyed. Despite being the wisest man on the earth, he died in his sins. Although Solomon had many wives and concubines, the Most High allowed only his wife that was a daughter of Zion to have his son, Rehoboam. All of his other wives and concubines only had daughters for him. Yet King Solomon took to himself many wives, 700 daughters of kings, 300 concubines, a thousand in number. Yet although Solomon married these many wives, they did not bear him a single male child, except Rehoboam of Amnon, the daughter of Dan, king of Ammon, who was of a blessed race. Thus, again, God would not allow the seed of the Canaanites to mingle with that of strange peoples, which God had made strangers. Israelites, this is why you must continue to search the deep things of the Most High. Don't follow people who are led by their flesh to cause you not to inherit the kingdom. A person who cannot control the lust of the flesh, the Satans will lead them astray. Joseph's two sons from his wife that is a descendant of Mizraim, was not a Canaanite woman. I am sure that Ephraim and Manasseh married a daughter of Zion once Jacob and his family went to the land of Mizraim and dwell in the city of Goshen. Another individual many used to justify taking strange women as wives in this generation is Ruth. There are many speculation about Ruth's bloodline. Some say she's an Israelite, while others say she's a Moabite. The scriptures in the Bible called Ruth a Moabitess. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field, and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. The Israelite bloodline was created within the Hebrew bloodline. The scriptures called Abraham a Hebrew. The matriarchs of the Israelite bloodline came from the Hebrew bloodline. Jacob's sons married within the Hebrew bloodline. Tamar, the wife Judah found for his son from the Canaanite woman, is from the Hebrew bloodline. The Most High used the children Judah had by Tamar to form the tribe of Judah. The sons of Jacob had to marry in order to have children to create the righteous seed. Majority of the sons of Jacob married within the Hebrew bloodline. Abraham had brothers that was of the Hebrew bloodline. Lot is Abraham's nephew. Lot's father was Abraham's brother, Haran. Ruth is a descendant of Lot. The Most High gave to Lot an opportunity to be mentioned in the genealogy of the kingdom through Judah. And thou must know that from Boaz and Ruth, the Moabitess, began the kingdom whereby Lot, 
the son of Abraham's brother, obtain a share in the generations of the kingdom of Judah. The Most High considered Lot righteous, and the Most High allowed Lot to be mentioned in the genealogy of the kingdom through Ruth. Lot suffered with Abraham. Lot also received the angels the Most High sent to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. The Most High considered Lot righteous. The Most High said he was not going to deny Lot a share from the kingdom. Also, the Most High wasn't going to cut off Lot's seed. For God denied not seed to Lot, neither would he cut it short. For this Lot was righteous and shared all Abraham's troubles with him and received the angels of God in Sodom and Gomorrah. Therefore did God give to Lot's children fellowship in the kingdom, and that was reckoned for righteousness unto Lot the righteous. Ruth is indeed a Moabitess. Boaz, the husband to Ruth, was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. From Ruth and Boaz came their son Obed. Obed is the father to Jesse. Jesse fathered King David. The Most High made a promise to David that the Messiah would come from his lineage. Despite the Most High allowing Ruth, a Moabite woman, to enter the genealogy, the Messiah is still from the seed of Abraham. For this reason also were Lot's children mentioned among the genealogies of the kingdom of Abraham and of Lot, for Christ was born of Abraham's seed. Then again, Obed, Ruth's son, was of Lot's seed on his mother's side. And Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. Both Lot and Abraham came from the Hebrew bloodline. The reason Lot was with Abraham, Lot lost his father Haran due to the fire Abraham set in the temple that destroyed his father's idol gods. Haran was Abraham's brother. Then Abraham arose and took Sarah his wife and Lot his brother's son, and they came to the land of the Amorites. Lot was the son of Haran, Abraham's brother. Haran perished trying to put out the fire set by Abram to the idol temple at Ur. Ruth is no different from the other Hebrew women used to establish the Israelite bloodline. The scriptures in the Bible said that no Moabite shall come into the congregation, not even until the 10th generation shall a Moabite and an Ammonite enter the congregation of the Most High. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when ye came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against thee Balaam the son of Beor of Pethor of Mesopotamia to curse thee. Although the Most High did not destroy the Ammonites and the Moabites for the sake of Lot, the righteous, The Most High mentioned Lot in the genealogy through Ruth to fulfill the covenant the Most High made not to deny Lot. The Most High didn't say he gave the Moabites and the Ammonites to be a part of the kingdom. He allowed Lot to be mentioned in the genealogy. Remember, by the third and fourth generation, the infiltrated seed is wiped out. David was the third generation from Obed, the son of Ruth and Boaz. The Moabites and the Ammonites war with the Israelites, as you just heard in the scriptures. That is why the Mosai said no Moabite or Ammonite could enter into his congregation forever. Ruth is indeed a Moabite woman. The Most High made an exception for Ruth to fulfill a covenant he made with Lot. As you can see, the Most High was strict with our ancestors on who they should marry. The Israelites couldn't marry just anyone. The Israelite nation was a righteous seed the Most High raised on the earth to be a light to the nations that were led astray through idol worship. Today, as the descendants of the Israelites, many are polluting the Israelite bloodline with the strange women and men. How many times did the Most High make the sons of Israel put away their strange wives and children? Now when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers hath been chief in this trespass. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down astonished. 
And Shechaniah the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God, and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives, and such as are born of them, according to the counsel of my Lord, and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God, and let it be done according to the law. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee, we also will be with thee. Be of good courage, and do it. Then arose Ezra, and made the chief priests, the Levites, and all Israel to swear that they should do according to this word, and they swear. Israelites, this is why it's important for you to establish your own personal relationship with the Most High. I know you have your favorite people you like to listen to about the truth of the Most High's words. Some of you have to understand many of our people are deceived and they are being led by a spirit of falsehood. The indoctrination done to our people through religion have a strong hold on the minds of our people. That is why the scripture said in order to be transformed, you have to let the Most High renew your mind. If the people you listen to don't submit to the Most High and repent of their sins daily, they are not hearing from the Most High. That is why you shouldn't put your salvation in the hands of another person. Go to the Most High for yourself and establish the relationship with the Father to learn how to serve the Most High in the Spirit and in the truth. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. The hour has come and now is when the true worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. The Canaanites were cursed because they inhabited a land that didn't belong to them. In addition to stealing the land from Shem, they war against the Israelites throughout the generations. Jacob also cursed the Canaanites and said the Canaanites wouldn't mingle with his seed. The scriptures in the Bible eliminated the story about Canaan, the son of Ham, stealing the land of Canaan from Shem. The workers of iniquity used the situation that happened between Ham and his father Noah as the reason why Canaan was cursed. The oath Noah made with his sons brought forth death to anyone who occupied land that didn't belong to them. The curse Noah placed on Ham to make him a servant to his brothers made the Hamites a servant. Not a slave, but a servant. The Israelites who didn't destroy the Canaanites from their land made the Canaanites that dwell among them their servants. Neither did Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, nor the inhabitants of Beth Anath. But he dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and of Beth Anath became tributaries unto them. The Israelite tribes who didn't remove and destroy the Canaanites from their land, the Canaanites became a thorn to them. That is how majority of our ancestors were deceived into idol worship following the heathens around them. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bokim and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars. But ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you. But they shall be as thorns in your sides. And their gods shall be a snare unto you. Jacob's curse on the Canaanites prevented the seed of Canaan from intermingling with the Israelites. Truly the truth shall make you free. The synagogue of Satan inserted many false narratives into the scriptures. They taught us nothing but lies. Their doctrines are a stumbling block to all people who are deceived by them. We all have heard about the curse of Ham doctrine. The workers of iniquity use this doctrine to subjugate the indigenous black people worldwide. Yet the colonizers who made us their slaves are not even of the seed of Shem, Japheth, or Ham but they are of their father, the devil. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Israelites, 
As the Most High is making the truth known in the awakening and in the last days, be careful. Don't let indoctrinated Israelites and non-Israelites steal the good seed the Most High is planting in you. You can always ask the Father, and he will reveal the truth to you by his Spirit. Many prophecies will be fulfilled in the last days. Don't let the Satans mislead you into believing the truth the Most High is making available for all people to make them free is a doctrine of devil. The Most High said your knowledge would increase. Israelites, look at it in this perspective. If the doctrines, the church and Israelites who support the doctrines from Rome was the truth, how come the end didn't come? The scripture said the truth must be taught in all the kingdoms of this world. When the truth is heard in all the kingdoms of this world, the end will come. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. We have been hearing about the curse of him, God in the flesh, Jesus is our savior, the laws are done away with, spiritual Israel, and countless other doctrines for multiple generations. Every generation up until now have heard the heathens repeat the same doctrines. Rome established itself in every nation in this world. Even the most remote places of this world have heard Rome's doctrines. The entire world accepted the image of the beast as God in the flesh. The end didn't come when the doctrines of the heathens were taught in all the kingdoms of this world. In the false awakening, many Israelites are repeating what was taught to them in religion. The moment the Most High started to reveal the truth, and the identity of the true Son of God was revealed, a big shift took place. We are seeing the Most High separating the tares from the wheat, fulfilling prophecy. The heathens have increased the censorship on this channel, as well as many other channels that speak the truth in boldness. If what being taught wasn't the truth, Satan wouldn't censor. He would promote it and force it upon the people. Israelites, a holy people that is set apart is not following after the beast culture. Spend time in the presence of the Most High to digest the truth he is making available to his people. Remember, Israelites, narrow is the way that leads to life, and only a few will find the way. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. 